But it's a it's the question about also about how we imagine things to be changing. There's a lot of discussion tonight about the the change in the economy, how that changes the profession, the change in how we understand the profession and the discipline, and then the ability. I've always characterized it as that the construction industry is slow to change. Mm -hmm. It seems like it seems like the educational system is might be even slower to change. Well, that's funny. I think that. of the construction industry as having rapidly changed in my experience. Can you give us some names of your contractors? <laughs> <laughs> it's not about the contractor. I, I think the tools have changed dramatically in my, in my short lifetime. The interests have changed dramatically. The quality, the quality has changed dramatically. And I mean, when we graduated from school, and I'm sure... Yeah, there were much, far fewer what we call good contractors I mean, out there. The construction industry was a disaster. I agree with you, generally yeah. speaking. <laughs> no, I, I think it has changed, in, in America, it has changed dramatically. I also think equipment and technology and tools have changed dramatically and continue to change dramatically. And it's only going to accelerate. The first project that we ever did was a chapel at Northeastern University, and that was CNC Valley. And I remember being taking a design and I thinking that it was going to be done with a table soon. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, I, and we wanted the effect of variation. So I think taking it, you know, design the arrangement of the glass to create the effect of variation, but actually with repetition. And we cut only three kinds of columns that will support the glass. But we did it in such a way that it would seem as if they were 25. And we got these funny drawings from the subcontractor, and I'm like, this is strange. So we went to the shop, and the reason they had done the drawings is that way. All of your drawings are by hand. Right. Uh, no, we no. were already we were already on the computer. <coughs> Computers came into into being like we graduated and I think a week later everybody was already <laughs> computerized. Right. I, I saw my wife for country. Yeah. 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 It's like a, I feel like I've gone through every program. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Honestly, it was like we graduated and you couldn't throw by hand anymore. No, we submitted. That was that is how we learned AutoCAD. We learned AutoCAD with the chapel. <laughs> But we submitted the AutoCAD drawings as sheets, of course, because at that time we printed them. And they came back with, they had redrawn them, which is not typical for shops. Usually what they do is they scan the drawings. Instead they had redrawn them, so I thought, what is that? So we went to visit them and I said, how can you redo this? And they said, well, because we use the drawings from the router. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And that's the first time I saw a CNC router. Wow. This is 1984. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, here's the thing. Seriously. This, this, this is, is what I mean. And, I mean and, I, and the guy explained to me how everybody in the East Coast, any mailship in the East Coast, had digitally guided routers and that this was the future and they were a small shop, they were like a form of shop. But you see, routers were being used for signage, for all kinds of things, for the longest time. I mean, this is what I mean by technologies that were being developed and being used for the most kind of mundane operations that Architects hadn't plugged into it, yeah. for sure, you know? Classical moldings yeah. have been used, oh, yeah. have been fabricated from, with routers since the 50s. Yeah. But to your point oh, yeah. a little bit, and, and, and what, what, what... I discovered, the number of companies... I mean, we're, you, you know, you're existing in a different realm of people doing jobs for the New York City Parks Department, like we do. And what so, do you mean? Would you do hair salons and restaurants? <laughs> no, but but I mean the New York There's City. There's nothing cheaper than a hair salon. <laughs> they're going to get the the worst possible contractor, rest assured, to do the project. But, but to me, it falls back a little bit back to education in a way because one of the things I'm fascinated with, and I don't teach full time as you do, but um, that now um, academic institutions have tremendous um, capabilities with technology, which in the profession the vast majority of the profession doesn't have, and that uh, I recently heard Mark Simmons talk about all of their consulting on you know, high-performance facades and whatnot, and I thought, he must be working in a world, I have no, I have no exposure <laughs> whatsoever to this in my, in my work. Everything's in China, you know, the Middle East, um, it's not happening here, or at least no, it doesn't as frequently. Your, your ceiling in that project is an interesting exception. Yeah, but I wasn't thinking but, of the ceiling. But I'm just saying that one of the things that I'd be intrigued by, and, and maybe it happens in, in, in ways that I'm not aware of, is how um, uh, you know the not just making the impossible um, super expensive, but making the you know uh, um, the possible affordable, you know, or something. But there's a sort of way in which the technology can be deployed that actually has value 
and can be applied more widely. Um, and that's what I don't. I think that's maybe what's going to be happening in academic institutions now is that the fascination with the tools, like you said, the chainsaw, might be wearing off. And then now there's the sense of how do we actually apply this in a kind of rigorous and focused way, not about effect, but about you know, multivalent problem solving.